we're doing classification. So uh, we talked about uh, classification, you're learning a function, right? This is our predictor function that's going to look at some data coming in and make some predictions about that data. And what we'll talk about is how do, you, how do, how do we actually learn uh, that function. So um, uh, the, the classification function looks like that, right? It's just f of x. x is whatever comes in. It's emails or some data that you want to predict something for. And we're predicting the y's. And because it's classification, y's, uh, there, is a, there is a finite and discrete and usually small number of classes that we're predicting. So um, if we're detecting spam, there's only two possible values for y. It's either spam or not spam. Um, if we're trying to uh, detect, uh, recognize digits, there is 10 possible values, digit 0, digit 1, digit 2, and so on. Right? So uh, it's classification, it's one of a small number of classes. So that's our y, and our x is the representation of the data that comes in. So if it's an email, it's the words in that email, and we talked about how exactly we can represent uh, an email uh, as, a, as, a, as a bag of words uh, you know, type attributes. Uh, if, it's a, if it's a digit, then it's a bitmap and a sort of pixels that goes along with it. All right, so that, that's our x and y. Um, now, uh, Bayesian classifiers are a, um, a naive Bayes is a specific um, subtype of a Bayesian classifier, and Bayesian classifiers themselves, it's, it's, it's part of a family of probabilistic classifiers. And what all probabilistic classifiers do is they assign class, they predict the class based on the computed probability of that class. Right? Uh, yeah, note, you don't have to do that. Right? A classifier could predict a class without predicting a probability. But a probabilistic classifier first predicts a probability and then picks the class that has the highest probability given the observation. So what they do is they compute this quantity p of y given x for all the classes y. Right? So suppose we're doing uh, spam detection. Uh, x is our email. Uh, it has the words as the representation. There are two possible classes, spam and non-spam. So our classifier is going to compute two numbers, probability of spam given that email and probability of non-spam given that email. Right? And then it's going to look at, the, at whichever class has the biggest probability. So if the probability for um, if the probability for spam is 55% and non-spam is 45%, it's going to predict spam. Right? Trivial, obvious. Uh, when you have two classes, this is not tremendously interesting. When you have many, many classes, uh, it actually becomes an interesting, <clears throat> an interesting selection problem. Um, now, the next part is, of course, to do that, you need to be able to compute these probabilities. You need to be able to comp compute probability of y uh, given x. And all Bayesian classifiers do it in one particular way. Um, not just naive Bayes. Any, any Bayesian classifier is going to compute it according to this formula right there. So <clears throat> that's our probability of an email being spam given whatever words I observe in it. And the way I'm going to compute that quantity is by flipping the conditional probabilities with Bayes' rule. Right. So I'm going to look at probability of x given y times probability of y times this whole denominator. This is just your p of x. I'm writing it out in a particular form. Uh, oftentimes you'll see it written as just p of x. Uh, and that sometimes leads to all kinds of uh, mistaken uh, expansions. Uh, it's a lot easier if you write it like that uh, from the beginning, where p of x, you're summing up over all possible classes y, in our case they're uh, spam and non-spam, uh, probability of x given that class times the probability of the class question. Uh, sorry, they don't necessarily add up to 1, do they? Like, in your example you said 55% uh, and 45%, I guess, also not sure, they don't necessarily add up to 1, right? So the question is, do the classes add up to 1? Uh, these guys, probability of y given x, they must add up to 1 over a set of classes. If they don't, you got, you got a mistake somewhere. Uh, probability of x given y certainly do not. They add up to 1 over all x's, which is to say that if you enumerate all possible emails in the universe, and you look at the probability of that email given the spam class, and you compute all of those probabilities, and you add them up, you will get a 1. 
Okay, but that's that that that's that's not typically feasible. Okay, so now uh, these parts they have names. Right, um, this part, the one that says what is the probability of a class uh, uh, independently of the email that I see, that's called the prior, uh, and we'll talk about what it means. Uh, this part is the class model. So this is assuming that the email is spam. How likely am I to see a particular set of words occurring and not occurring? Or assuming that the digit is a three, how likely am I to see a pixel in the upper left and a pixel in the middle uh, turned on? Right. So that's the class model. And then this thing is a normalizer. And again, we'll talk about what, uh, what this means on the next slide. 